All right, Rick, thank you so much. Well, one thing about Athens, it certainly doesn't lack tourist attractions. From the world's only double barrel cannon to the burial vaults of all the UGA Bulldog mascots, there's pretty much something for everyone, even tree lovers. Up the cobblestone street and at the corner of South Finley and Deering stands a beautiful and significant piece of Georgia history. Not as significant as this, at least not in Athens, but nonetheless significant. This tree is purported to be the first tree that ever owned itself. There are other trees that, do, that now do own themselves, but this was the first tree that owned itself. As legend has it, a gentleman named Colonel William Henry Jackson fell in love with the tree as a young boy. When he became an adult, the Colonel wanted to protect the tree long after he was gone. So at some point, he deeded the small section of land around the tree's base to itself, thus giving the tree ownership of both the land and itself. It's believed that that was probably sometime right around 1832. Uh, he was a pretty influential guy in the community. His father had actually been the governor of Georgia at one point, and his son went on to become a Supreme Court justice. Um, it's unclear just how much time he spent in Athens, but he did have ownership of the land and had appreciation for the tree, so right around that time period, he went ahead and tried to deed it to itself. Located just minutes from downtown Athens, the tree under common law doesn't really own itself. In fact, the law states that any person or anything receiving the property in question must have the legal capacity to receive it and the property must be delivered to and accepted by the recipient. Before 1890, this tree was virtually unknown. At that time, an article appeared in the paper about this tree that owns itself. And people, some people say that it was written by the editor to increase readership, or some people say it was a test for the law students in town to see, can a tree own itself? Can it? In, and then when the tree dies, who inherits the land? We kind of consider ourselves co-stewards of the tree along with the Junior Ladies Garden Club. And so what we do now is basically just check up on the tree. In fact, in 2008, we had a sponsor install a lightning protection system in the tree. Um, so luckily trees of this age and size tend to kind of manage themselves at this stage of their life. We do meet a lot of people around the tree. I've met people from Japan and Europe and people from out of state that happen to be visiting Athens and just want to come check it out. Now interestingly enough, this is not the original tree that owns itself. It's actually an offspring part of the family tree, if you pardon the pun. The original one fell back in the mid 40s, but thanks to nature's wonder, the acorn its legacy will continue to carry on. We don't have exact numbers. I do know that almost every single elementary school in Athens has a seedling of the tree that owns itself uh, planted out on Arbor Day. We've probably propagated another 75 to 100 of them, and then it's really anybody's guess of how many acorns have been picked up and put out in different people's yards. You think back in history, a lot of our communities or a lot of our laws, a lot of our religions developed under the boughs of a tree. Some of our great po poetry, some of our great literature. We have this re respect for trees. If it's in your, in your neighborhood, or in your yard, everybody likes to tell a story. Every garden tells a story. And you have something that relates to a bigger story, which is the, this tree. And certainly, you know, this tree uh, that exists here now is maybe the only tree that inherited the land <laughs> that it's on. Uh, uh, and uh, um, it's been growing very well since 1946.